So my name is Tom Moser. I'm a senior program manager on the cloud data security team, formerly the Azure Information and Protection team. And I'm going to talk to you all today about some APIs that we shipped in Graph quite a while ago. They're still in beta. Everything I'll talk about today is changing like this week, but functionally uh, everything remains about the same. We, we just moved to a different endpoint and uh, changed uh, some of the classes a little bit. So I'll, I'll walk you through what exactly Microsoft Information Protection is and does today, and then we'll get into some quick demos on the Graph APIs. So you may have heard of Microsoft Information Protection. It's a not a product, it's not something we sell, it's a set of capabilities that centers really around our ability to classify and protect data, whether that data is an office document, whether it's a team, a SharePoint site. We can apply sensitivity labels to that information and the sensitivity labels drive the protection story downstream. So I can uh, prevent guests from accessing the site. I can encrypt the content so it's only consumable by users in my organization and, and various other protections that we can apply based on the sensitivity label. And the idea is that users can apply that label based on their knowledge of the information, which will then hopefully secure it. So the, the sensitivity labels themselves are configured as part of Compliance Center. You may have seen this taxonomy where we start at public and things go all the way to highly confidential, completely customizable based on your organizational needs. So uh, I'll show you an example of what the Microsoft taxonomy looks like here in a minute. You can have top secrets, uh, whatever you want to call them. And the idea is that by users or automations applying what they know about the content to some piece of information, we can help to better restrict access to that information and protect our organizations from data leakage. So a, a few examples of integrations that we have today in just Microsoft products uh, with the sensitivity labeling, you may have seen this in Teams where I can create a team and I can set the sensitivity and, and setting that sensitivity, like in the slide here, we've set it to confidential, restricts the audience for that. So by setting that to confidential, I can make this team so it's only available for my organization. It can't have guests or be public. Power BI has also shipped support for labeling, wherein that I can apply labels to Power BI artifacts, to Power BI desktop uh, reports and things. And that, that again drives the protection story. Um, so it'll encrypt that PBIX file, preventing me from sharing it outside of my organization. And then finally, on the right side, you can see the Office example. So this is the sensitivity label interface inside of, of Office. This is, I think, actually the Azure Information Protection one, where we've defined our classification taxonomy all the way from non-business to highly confidential. And then under confidential and highly confidential, we have a set of sub-labels that all apply a different behavior. And those behaviors can be things like applying metadata to the content so that we know the label exists, applying protection settings to the content. So in the case of uh, confidential Microsoft FTE, we restrict that for only Microsoft full-time employees. Extended would expand to our vendors and other partners. And you can use that to scope, scope down the audience on documents or emails as far as who can access that information. Additionally, we can apply things like content marking, so header, footer, and watermark so that we can visually see that this information is protected. And then we support a bunch of other non-office related things that are more for Power BI teams and, and other workloads. Um, question about licensing, this is uh, available in E3. So as long as you have M365 E3, you can access all of this. Now the, the, the features may vary. You don't get some of the auto classification capabilities, but the labeling itself is available for E3. So today to enable this, this is my responsibility. What I work on today is the Microsoft Information Protection Developer Platform, which includes really two main parts today. Uh, one is the MIP SDK, which has been available for about four years, and then the others are graph interface. So I'll cover the SDK only because it really sets us up for talking about the graph API, and then we'll talk about exactly what the graph API offers. So MIP SDK enables my apps and services to take all the labeling stuff that I just showed you and build it into my line of business apps, into uh, third-party apps. I'll show you some partners in the next slide. It's written in C++ cross-platform, so it works across Mac, Windows, Linux, uh, iOS, and Android. And we have .NET flavors available for Ubuntu and Windows, and we're working on a Java wrapper that's in preview now. Eventually, the Java wrapper will work across all of our supported platforms. We don't expect that to be generally available until later this year. And again, this allows you to extend the classification, labeling, and protection capabilities into your own apps and services and line of business apps. 
Uh, this is used across a whole bunch of our partners and vendors. Internal workloads include Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, Office apps. We have some internal workloads. There's first party only that are, are starting to take this up. And then we've got a whole bunch of third party partners that are integrating this as well. And then finally, I'll talk about this more in a minute, we have the graph interfaces that expose some of our policy interface. So the MIP SDK itself is really uh, three different SDKs. We have our, starting at the bottom right, the protection SDK, which is purely about encryption. It allows me to encrypt and decrypt buffers or streams of bytes and to expose some information about the rights management. So inside of Office, we can restrict things like copy and print or across any app that consumes the SDK. And the protection SDK is responsible for surfacing the crypto operations and the rights management component. And then it's up to my app to enforce that. To the left of that, we have the policy SDK, which uh, is useful for client applications. So a couple of slides ago where I showed you those, those uh, admin interfaces or user interfaces where I can configure the label, that's driven by our policy SDK, which is what we'll talk about in graph today. And then finally is our file SDK. So this is used by partners like Veritas, Digital Guardian, Forcepoint, Veronis to reason over files directly. I don't have to know anything about how to encrypt a file. I don't have to parse out streams from a Word doc or anything. Um, I, I point the API to a file. I point the API to a label ID and it takes care of the rest for me also used inside of line of business applications and customer environments to encrypt things like PDF files or Office Docs at creation instead of relying on the user to do something. So we'll get to the policy SDK because that's what the graph interface uh, is covering today. The policy SDK and our graph APIs, I like to say, don't actually do anything. They're not going to label any content for you. They're not going to take any actions on something that you own. It, it's more of a state machine that returns some information about policy that your application then has to apply. So what we'll do is allow you to pass in a state. You can say the document has this label on it or has no label on it, and I want to apply this label to the content. And what our API will return is a set of actions, and those actions need to be taken by your application in order to appropriately label the content based on the MIP-defined labeling patterns. So the input's always going to be this, what we call an execution state or a content state, and the output will always be a list of actions for our evaluate APIs. And I'll show you some examples here momentarily. This also covers our auditing. So if you've seen the uh, auditing story inside of the compliance portal in M365, the policy SDK is responsible for those events landing inside of the audit experience. This API is exposed via both graph and MIP SDK, so you could go to NuGet, download our, our .NET package, and run this in like a local app or, or an app hosted in Azure, or you can just hit our graph endpoint directly. So I'll switch over to demos. Now my demos are all in Postman today. We're in the middle of changing these APIs based on feedback from customers and trying to consolidate. And so today what you'll see is I've got uh, a bunch of different uh, APIs over here and calls that I can make. Um, get labels, these evaluate calls, and then extract label are the ones that we'll look at today because those are the primary ones. The rest of these are, are mostly for testing. So today this is hitting the graph beta endpoint. We're not available at the V1 endpoint yet. Um, we're shipping some updates again to graph where we're going to migrate this. So rather than this endpoint being under information protection policy, you'll see this hopefully by the end of the week under security slash information protection slash sensitivity labels. And we're doing some work internally to consolidate across security and compliance and, and get all of our APIs in one, one place. So this is our get labels API. A user could call this or an application could call this. Uh, if I'm a user and I call this API, I will get back the labels that are specific to me. If I'm a service and I call this, I can either make a delegated call where I say, give me the labels for a user, or I can call and get all the labels for the tenant. So that might be used by, for example, networks shipped an integration with their next generation firewall. They would want to do that as an admin, so they have a full purview into all the labels that are in the tenant so they can block things leaving the network. And if I run this, and if everything goes well, I'll get a reply back and you'll see a whole bunch of labels in here. So these these label names aren't great. They're for testing. But what I get back is a collection of these information protection policy labels that contains really the, the assets that I need to render this inside of an application. So I'm not going to get any details on policy. This doesn't tell me 
what to do when I apply that label. It just says, here's the label name, here's the color if it's set, here's the sensitivity value, so I know how to order this in my list. Here's whether it's active or not. And then I could use that to render the experience inside my application. So whether that's a web app, whether it's a mobile client, um, this is how I can fetch the labels. So then the next call a user might make is I've, uh, my application has rendered these labels and now I wanna call the API and say, hey, tell me what to do. I've got this content state and now I wanna apply a label. So in this case, what we've got is it's this content info object that we pass in. We're gonna set some information about the current state. So we pass in some key value pairs that say, this is the label that exists on the document today. And if we scroll down and then we'll say, and this is the label ID that I want to apply now. So tell me what to do. And when I run this, I'll get a response that tells me exactly what I have to do. So this contains uh, a bunch of what we call information protection actions. And in this case, add content footer actions. So specifically, this API is going to say, I need to add a content footer. I need to add a content header with um, this text and this font. So it's completely configurable by the, by the admin. I need to apply this metadata to the content. So this is what tells us that the information is labeled. So if I apply this to a Word doc or to a PDF, downstream applications using MIP SDK will be able to consume that label and understand how to treat that information. Um, oh, sorry, this is the remove. The add is here. So this is where we'll, we'll actually add the, the metadata. If I had protection actions, those would surface here as well. So it would say apply this template ID or um, allow the user to define the protection. And then the user would have some user interface to set that. Oh, we have an API for removal. So if you have a, a piece of information, so similar to apply or evaluate application, I'm going to pass in some content state that says, here's what I have on the document. Tell me how to remove this label. And then the API is just going to return some explicit instructions on which metadata I need to strip out of that to remove the MIF label. Uh, only for my organization. So if if Contoso and Fabricam have both la both labeled this document and I'm calling this remove from Fabricam, I'll only remove the Fabricam metadata. So then the next one is uh, extract labels. So this might be if um, I've I've written some software that can extract the strings or metadata out of some document that's that I found either DLP software or or my firewall software or maybe just a line of business app. I can pass that metadata up to the extract label API and it'll tell me exactly which labels on that content. So here you can see that I've extracted some key pairs, key value pairs from the document that I found, call this API and we'll actually get the label ID back. So I would know that this label is uh, scoped to Bob tests. And then finally, this one I saved till last only because it's only sort of available. This one allows you to perform classification. So one of the E5 features that's available inside of MIP is that I can perform auto classification by setting rules inside of the label policy. So I can say if you find a certain number of credit cards or social security numbers, that information should be highly confidential and you should apply that label to it. Now, the, the gap here is that we don't actually have any public APIs that allow customers and partners to do this classification. So you could certainly go into our docs and look up like, find the sensitive information type ID and build your own classification system, pass that into our API here, and we would give you a result. But doing that classification would be up to you. So what this API takes in is, is a, a content info. Well, we give a, an identifier. This is what will actually show up in my analytics for the admin to review. Um, some state information at rest in motion, and then format. So this is default or email. Default refers to files. And then I'll pass in some classification results. So assuming I wrote my own classifier or I'm using the Microsoft classification engine, which is what Office uses, I pass in a sensitive information ID. I pass in the number of occurrences that I found and my confidence level. And based on all of that, the API will return a recommended label or an automatic label. Recommended means, hey, user, we found some information in your document. You should label this appropriately. And, and they can choose to do that or to ignore it. Automatic is just happens. The, the user gets no choice. We say, wow, there's 100 credit card numbers in this document. We need to make that highly confidential and then we'll apply that label. So overall, what we've exposed here in graph and what we're, we're moving to the new endpoint here this week are just the APIs that allow us to reason over policy. I can, again, list labels in my application. I can use it to evaluate uh, label application or removal. I can use it to extract the content metadata and resolve that to a label. 
uh, or I can perform the classification results. Quick plug, I'll be on the, the 425 Dev Show on Thursday morning this week at 8 a.m. to talk more about MipSDK. I'll show a sample application there, uh, ASP.NET Core sample app, probably in Linux and Windows. And so if you're wanting to learn more about MipSDK, that's at 8 a.m. on Thursday. And I will answer questions in chat. Cool. Thank you, Tom, on that one. Thank you.